Oh, the big stunt. We did this with real fire. This was real. Dom ran the Dom ran it, yeah. I got to hit the button. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Andrew Cannon, the Santa Cruz Skateboards brand manager, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to a whole new segment that we're working on with our YouTube channel. We are going to be focusing on artists, bands, and different types of creators that are all cut from the same cloth as skateboarding. All right, so for our first episode, we're going to be checking in with our friends in Code Orange. Code Orange is a two-time Grammy-nominated band from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania that has the DIY ethic written all over it. They make their own graphics, their own 3D animations, they handle their own merch store, their live streams, and their Twitch. After the success of their first live stream, they put more and more time and energy into the production to continue to raise the bar. With their latest one, Back Inside the Glass, they took things to a completely different level. It was an audio-visual live stream unlike anything I had ever seen. <laughs> I got really into Code Orange back in about 2014 when their album I Am King came out and when I bought the vinyl, inside it had a little saying. It said, no boxes, no boundaries, no fear. And that hit me super hard as someone who had pretty recently joined the Santa Cruz team and we had a lot of decisions to make and we were making some serious changes. And I went and got it tattooed right there on my wrist because I wanted to make sure that it was something that I was able to look at and focus when things were not weren't necessarily going the way you would think, and you had to make these tough decisions. And so, although the music has personally been inspirational for me, the actual message has been inspirational for the way that we handle things at Santa Cruz over these last handful of years. So in this video, the Code Orange crew bring us behind the scenes and show us what it's like to operate a DIY operation through social media and live streaming in these uncertain times. Santa Cruz, skateboard in the house, let's go. Code Orange is here. Welcome to You and You Alone, episode 10. This is the first time we've ever done You and You Alone with the whole crew in the house. Today, what we're gonna be doing is uh, what we're calling a music video retrospective. All right, we're gonna go into the first music video, <laughs> and it's for a song called I Am Kid. Damn, I am skin and you fucking like bones, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld haircut, skin and bones. <laughs> After quarantine started, March 14th, when our live show, uh, record release show, got canceled. So we kind of were forced to just jump into Twitch literally like in one day. But then after that, we like learned how to do it and have just been experimenting with it and doing this You and You Alone series. So we've just kind of been learning as we go. All right, soundtrack for the new Minions movie, when? Coming soon. <laughs> Code Orange, have you guys been approached to do a five gum commercial yet? No, but this straight up looks like a five gum commercial right now. <laughs> how does it feel to chew five gum while listening to Code Orange? We had a rec release show that was supposed to be March 14th. It was going to be in Pittsburgh. We had a bunch of bands or our friends playing with us. It was going to be our first show with a bit of a lineup change. I've been this uh, drummer and singer in the past, but I was, I've now on this album, I'm just singing, and uh, we have a new drummer, whole new live show. We worked on the live show for probably half a year at least, including the visuals and practice and just gearing up so we were really looking forward to it so then that got canceled and we all just were in front of our practice space and we we're like okay what are we gonna do and we just started making calls called uh hate five six who's like an amazing videographer who we've worked with through the hardcore scene his name's sunny and he's one of the most talented live videographers out there got him on board reba helped us figure out some of the streaming stuff with twitch and we just made it happen we hit the venue up told him the sitch so that led to our first live stream, which was an empty venue live stream called Last Ones Left. And it's crazy because from what, you know, after that one live stream, it was kind of like a confirmation, like, oh, we can do this. You, know, you see these big productions that other artists do, especially nowadays, like, you know, the, the Billie Eilish is that world of uh, production stuff. And it's all super crazy, but we just have like a network in Pittsburgh. So it's been cool actually being home and being able to strengthen like our network of people grinding at home ourselves with like our core people just in the band. Uh, we had time to actually learn how to do everything, which made those shows possible when on tour, it's kind of like you have to play the role of just being in the band and you can't really play to do two things at once. But 
we were able to put the time into prep and just figure it out straight up DIY style, just how to uh, stream and everything and how to do it ourselves. I feel like it was a definitely a different take on the format than normal where it was intersecting visuals, a lot of visuals and the live performance. And we were really embracing the empty venue aspect. So I think that was kind of the, the door opening. Oh well, yeah, we're live. This is Mud TV's Mud Bangers Ball. I'm Ricky Rackman. I guess there's only one thing left to do, right? Which led to our second concert, Under the Skin. Reba was saying we should do something like an MTV Unplugged. So we kind of plugged that into our puzzle, made it more of like a horror kind of VHS horror theme, and worked reworked a bunch of songs that way. They have no idea what we've got planned here. And that led us into this last one, which was Back Inside the Glass, which is like our most stepped up one. <laughs> super visually realized um it's kind of like an art installation we were like in the middle of all these moving changing environments from our records and shade and i uh we have a thing called nowhere to run productions we design the visuals for it and reba handled all the logistics and figuring out the projection mapping and it snowballed in itself basically the decisions were just made for us because we can't tour and we certainly aren't going to just not do anything <laughs> You, know, you should talk Dom and Joe about the store for sure because they work 10 hour days at this store every single day just in the attic shipping stuff and doing all that. So we uh, run this store out of an attic. Um, we have like two rooms, this room and the one behind you. Uh, this kind of started as like a smaller operation but as the pandemic spread and touring became off the option and obviously like grew and grew and grew if there's like a stream happening i mean i'd say we're up here 40 hours like minimum yeah like stream, if things like, are like we just did a black friday deal and uh you know that that you know we definitely get busy yeah. around that kind of stuff we usually work around like 10 to 6 like that's what we usually work just based on when the post office closes and stuff yeah this is one of the best ones currently um this is one of our newer shirts it's uh we had a stack up to about here a few days ago, and now we, this is all we have left of this, is this little stack right here. That's a new one, one of my favorites. So in the beginning, we were, it was, it had gone crazy, because we basically hosted all the pre-sales for our album that came out on the site. So we fulfilled oh, ourselves. Man. I mean, during yeah. that era, we were working yeah, like was 14 hours yeah, a Yeah, I mean, basically, like, at that point, how many, we had like thousands of records to send out, and it was oh, yeah. basically like, we have this much stuff. Here's what we can get done in a day. And here we can stretch yeah. it if we work 12 hours or whatever. So we just yeah. were every day from like March 13th to like I don't even know when we were just yeah. It was just it, it was, was as much as we months. can get done every day. Like yeah, and like we, we would every day there'd just be a stack of records yeah. like from here to the it ceiling, was, like humongous, like all the way, all the way down, the, all the way up, like just yeah, covering honestly, like, and we'd have to carry them all out. Four like, stacks of records, like oh yeah, floor to ceiling, yeah, <laughs> multiple trips like this down to the car. Yeah, it's to us, it's kind of that same thing. Like we don't know anything about this. We work jobs as like pizza makers and construction workers, and like you know, just stuff that has nothing to do with running a store or like mm. clothing or anything. But it was just that thing of like, we have a vision. Other people have a vision. Let's learn from them and make our own way. The whole DIY thing, it's not like, I mean, obviously we take tons of pride in it, but to us, it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Like this- There's uh, no other way, We yeah. couldn't survive without that work ethic and that mentality because there's no one reaching out and like yeah. plucking you from obscurity. If we want this whole thing to exist, if we want Code Orange to exist as this multifaceted entity, if we want to make these crazy live shows, no one's gonna give us the money for it. No one's gonna give us the production for it. No no one's going to make the show for us. No one's going to design it. We must do it all. Got to figure it out yourself. Yeah. Code Orange Matrix 4. I mean, come on. 1,000%. Because we got nominated for a Grammy and our price just went up. <laughs> Kim yeah. Diamond said we're all so gorgeous. Let's give her, give her a smile. Thanks. I'm assuming you want to hear all the tech jargon. I'll run through it. So we got the Universal Audio Apollo running our mics. Got a little monitor for us to see all the questions and stuff. Um, we got the Marshall camera um, running via NDI um, to film us and the green screen. Somebody send Mike Dean's Twitch into here. Isn't that how it works? If he's he has to, no. <laughs> we used to use OBS, but I just switched it to Streamlabs because it's just got more cool shit. 
more functionalities for like Twitch streaming and whatnot. As I said yesterday, I was on Fantano's ch uh, Twitch yesterday hoping to talk to Mario Judah, all right? And <laughs> you don't even know this story. I was hoping to get in there and let Mario Judah know he needs to check out Code Orange 100%. Doing this Twitch stuff has been just like another way to, to kind of keep us motivated and keep us like excited about doing this shit and not like just feel stagnant. It's kind of just our obsession with like staying super busy with the band. I want to say thank you to every single person watching this thing. It means a lot. We're doing this shit together. But I want you to look at something. Something you've been seeing a lot. Especially now that crowds are cut out because we love crowds and we love performing. What's the next exciting thing where we feel like we're pushing it? That is what I'm the most interested in. That is what we do this for. That's that on that. And we love you guys. Thank you for all the support. Appreciate you. Let's wave goodbye. Goodbye. Peace. Love you all. All right, everyone, that wraps up our episode with Code Orange. We hope you all appreciated it. In the comments below, we want to know what artists, creators, and bands you want to see on our channel and why. Thanks so much for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for checking out this video. Click subscribe to see all the squad. Subscribe. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Be a part of this. Subscribe to the Santa Cruz YouTube channel.